Canada curious? This is the Yes We Canada podcast, the progressive's guide to getting the fuck out. This episode is called Jump Down, Turn Around, Pick Your Passport. Hi, I'm Matt Zimbel. Progressives, I know you. I know what you're thinking. woo We just saved the Republic. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early Can y'all get me some drum and fife music? I feel like dancing! Easy there, big fella. You have not yet saved the Republic. Trump's lost. He's probably going to leave. He might even someday actually agree to vacate the White House when his entitled little Republican hissy fit ends. Amtrak Joe and Vice President-elect Kamala Harris, who was educated in Montreal, Canada, will govern, Congress permitting, of course. So, yes, a positive development for the Republic. A moment to celebrate is merited after a hard-fought election. I agree. (laughs) Good. Feel better? Well, my fellow Americans, I do love your spirit and your eternal optimism, and I do hate to burst your bubble with irritating facts. But I keep telling you, Moscow Mitch McConnell has appointed over 200 right-wing judges and three Supremes, all of whom will die on the bench. Plus, Republicans did well in the elections, nationally and statewide. They may control the Senate again. And don't forget, your deplorables have 300 million guns. Many of them are military assault weapons. And former presidential special counselor Steve Bannon, currently on bail for fraud, has publicly suggested that an American doctor who was one of the world's leading epidemiologists undergo a beheading during a pandemic. So, yes, you are still moving to Canada. I'm sorry. Now, to do so, you have to apply, take a test. What about the credit card? Yada, yada, yada. We've been through this before on other episodes. We're not going to go through it again. And after you're approved for your permanent resident status, you become a landed immigrant. And once that happens, you may actually apply for Canadian citizenship if you have remained in the country for 1,095 days, including winters, you wimp. Now, once you apply for citizenship, you'll have to take a test, which is why you're listening to this podcast. When you become a Canadian citizen, and you will pass the test, you'll have the right to retain your American citizenship, and I highly recommend doing so, because this will give you two passports and you will maintain the ability to work in the United States. The only downside is that you'll have to continue paying your American taxes even if you do not work or live in America. Giving up your American citizenship, or what the State Department calls denouncing, is difficult, expensive, and super stupid. For some reason, it's also very popular. So much so that the U.S. government recently raised the cost of denouncing from $450 to $2,350. American. It's the highest cost in the world for renouncing your citizenship. My theory is that your soon-to-be ex-President Trump was afraid that under his presidency, everyone, including his family, would eventually get repulsed and want to leave. To stop the exodus, he raised the rate. In any event, you do not want to renounce because, as it says on the State Department website, renouncing is a serious an irrevocable action. Somewhat like when Secretary of State Rex Tillerson was caught off mic calling Modus a fucking moron. All right, if this is your first episode with us, you'll need to know that the 45th president of the United States is known on Yes We Canada as the character Modus. The acronym is Moron of the blah, 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 you get the rest. And it's exactly what got Rex fired via tweet. We talk about this on the podcast regularly because we just find it makes the podcast way more fun. 
So let's just say you successfully get your Canadian citizenship. And after spending your first winter here, you decide, geez, Canada is so freaking cold. I'm going home to the divided states of America. Well, it's no biggie renouncing your Canadian citizenship. Only cost 100 bucks, which is about $73 American. Progressives, can we talk Ted Cruz for a second without you shutting off the podcast? Come and listen to my story about a man named Ted, a poor politician, barely kept his gerrymandered district fed. Boy, gerrymandered does not scan well in a song. I'm going to have to send that back to the shop. You see, Texas Senator Ted Cruz was born in Canada to an American mother and a Cuban father. He lived his first four years in Calgary, Alberta. Now, because he was born in Canada to American parents, he automatically became an American and a Canadian citizen. But when he was considering a run for the presidency of the United States in 2014, he suffered an extreme bout of xenophobia nervosa, and the doctors advised him to renounce his Canadian citizenship, which he claims to have never even known he had. What is it with your Republicans? John McCain didn't know how many houses he had. Ted Cruz doesn't know how many citizenships he has. Donald Trump doesn't know how many votes he has. You know, it's no wonder Republicans create huge deficits. I know you Americans take your presidential birther issues seriously. And I need to tell you that even though Calgary is not a Muslim country as such, its mayor, Nahid Kurban Nenshi, is in fact Muslim. He's the first Muslim mayor of a North American city. He arrived in Canada in his mother's belly when she immigrated from Tanzania. In 2014, Mayor Nenshi won the World Mayor Prize for Best Mayor of the Year by the UK-based City Mayors Foundation. It was the first time a Canadian mayor had ever won. So Ted, while I have your attention, you might want to check out Nahid's extremely successful immigration story. Mother, Tanzania, mayor, Calgary, three terms and counting, best mayor in the world, immigrant, just saying, dude. On June 20th, 2010, Ted Cruz renounced his Canadian citizenship with this tweet from his spokesperson, Catherine Fraser. It's official, y'all. At Ted Cruz has finished renunciation of Canadian citizenship. Oh, Canada. Ted, you can come back, but just think now. It's going to cost you a few thousand bucks. A few thousand bucks you really didn't have to spend. A few thousand bucks you could have donated to a food bank, just like the Muslim mayor of Calgary did after his football team lost the Grey Cup. Oh yeah, the Grey Cup is like your Super Bowl, but with three downs instead of four, a much bigger playing field, and poverty-stricken players. Well, you're a progressive, and surely Ted fucking Cruz is not one of your influencers. So just because he renounced his Canadian citizenship, you would never renounce your American citizenship, would you? Well, would you? Of course you wouldn't. America's the greatest country in the... Yeah, right. Here's another reason you do not want to renounce your U.S. citizenship. If you are not a U.S. citizen, you need to get a work permit to work in the U.S. It's called a green card, and it is essentially a license for a foreign national to earn green in the U.S. Ask most Canadians what they would do to get an American green card, and you'll hear things like, oh, let's see, hmm, I guess I could give up one of my children. <laughs> oh, that's a tough one. Mm, a green card. <laughs> Maybe you could take Grandma? Hi, honey. Oh, you've grown. Where are we going? Hey, wh wh who are these men? Where are you going? Where are you going? Where are you going? So you would never, ever give up your American citizenship. And now you'll have two passports. You are what we call bi. You'll have to decide over and over which passport to use, in which situation, or how you identify. This is how I do it. When I'm on a bus boarded by Uzi-toting terrorists in the Middle East, and I'm asked for my passport, 
I give them my Canadian passport. But when I have to be airlifted out of Mogadishu after the city has fallen to rebel forces and descended into lawlessness, I use my American passport. This makes perfect sense. The same American arrogance and utter disregard for foreign nationals is the reason no one likes Americans overseas and wants to board tourist buses with Yuzis in the first place. But that arrogance and disregard for others is exactly what you want when you need to be extracted by helicopter from a crisis situation overseas. Just do me a favor. When the country you've been visiting is overthrown by terrorists and the U.S. Army Black Hawk has landed on the roof of the American Embassy and you're the last person on the rope line being pulled up and out of the gunfire, grab a local, or at least a fellow Canadian, and take them with you. It's the least you can do.